Today, we're checking out Cursor AI, an AI-powered code editor that promises to make your development significantly easier. Now, I've been using this for the past few weeks. It's pretty interesting, and I wanted to make a quick tutorial on it to share with you what I've learned and some of the best practices that you can apply, especially if you're a more beginner programmer and you haven't used a ton of these AI tools before, or you don't know exactly how they work and how to get the best results out of them. So with that said, let's dive into it and let's learn about how to use Cursor AI. Now at this point, I'm gonna assume that you've downloaded it. If you haven't, give it a shot, it's free. There also is a paid version if you want some more features and unlimited usage, but I'd recommend even if you're an experienced developer because it is pretty cool and it kind of makes you question how you've been working in the past and if this is something that you might wanna to switch to. Anyways, once you've got Cursor AI open, what I recommend doing is just opening a new folder. So to do that, you can go to file and then open folder. And then from here, you can just make a new folder on your desktop, for example, and open it up. That's because a lot of beginners actually just work in whatever the default folder is that it starts you in. And then they can kind of lose their work if they don't know where that folder location is, or it can be a bit more difficult to get back to it. Now, especially if you're a beginner here, what I'd recommend doing before you start using any of the features that I'm gonna show you is making a little bit of a plan. AI works best at solving really small, discrete, detailed tasks. The more specific you can be, the more context and information you give it, the better results you're gonna get. You'll notice if you just ask it to do something like generate me a to-do list application or give me a portfolio website or you give it like a really general one or two sentence long task, you can get wildly different results and something that you're not looking for at all. And once it starts going in one direction, it can kind of branch and just bring you all over the place if you don't know what you actually want. So make sure you know what you want, you have a clear vision of what it is that you want to build. And I highly recommend at least jotting down some notes or even drawing out a picture of what you want the user interface at minimum to look like because that's really gonna help guide you through this process. Anyways, let's imagine you've got a plan at this point, you know what you wanna do and you've kind of thought about it at least for a few minutes. The first feature I wanna show you here is the Compose feature. Now, or the Composer feature, whatever you wanna call it. Now, in order to enable this, uh, you're gonna to have to go to File and go to Preferences, Cursor Settings, and then click on Features here. Now scroll down, you should see the composer and then you can enable it by just selecting enabled. I think by default it's disabled, so that's why I'm mentioning that to you. Okay, so now that we've got that, what we can do is press Control I and that's gonna open up the composer view. If you're on Mac, it's gonna be Command I. Now this is what can actually edit multiple files at the same time and create new files for you. So this is what I like to start with when I'm generating a brand new application. And then if I wanna do a major feature change or there's something that's gonna to apply to a ton of different applications or sorry, a ton of different files, I'll use this. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open the control panel so it's a bit larger and I can kind of see this here and I'm gonna ask it exactly what I want it to do. All right, so I've written a quick prompt here. You guys can read through it if you want, but the important thing is that I'm specifying exactly what I want it to do, and I'm telling it what framework, languages, etc. I want it to use. Now, if you don't know, you can ask it to recommend to you which ones you should use, but I do recommend doing a bit of research before you just dive into this and use like a random language or a random framework. And uh, you can actually ask other AIs or even the one inside of this app, which I'll show you in a minute, hey, I wanna build this type of application. What's the simplest way to do that? And then and it can give you some recommendations. Point is, I'm asking it that I wanna use uh, Express, which is a JavaScript framework for the backend, SQLite for storing the uh, recipes, which is my database, and I wanna use JavaScript, HTML, and CSS with Tailwind for the front end. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit enter here, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna start generating a ton of different files for me. So it will give me some instructions because it can't quite do everything, like running, for example, terminal commands, uh, but it can generate a majority of the application. So let me zoom out a little bit, uh, just so that we can see this a bit better. Okay, and let's go back here. All right, so you can see that it has generated the server for me. We have the index, we have style, we have script. We'll just wait for that to finish and then we can actually just accept all of these changes and it will apply to our app. All right, so it finished now. I can go and I can look at all of these files. I can ask it for revisions to change things around, pretty much whatever I want. And then I can just accept all of these changes or I can accept one file at a time. So I'm gonna go accept all. And this is very similar to what you do in like a GitHub pull request or something. Uh, and you can see that it's gonna generate these files for me. So let me get out of the composer view. Now I have my index, my script, my styles, and my server. Okay, so that is the first feature. That is the composer, very useful for generating bigger features, a lot of code, 
getting you started, but sometimes it can get a little bit crazy and also it's difficult to review all of the code that's inside of there. So I wanna show you the next feature that I found myself using the most, and this is the kind of the general chat view. I'm not sure exactly what they call it, but if you hit Control L or Command L, you're gonna get into this chat. Now in here, you don't actually have to ask anything coding related, but this does have access to the entire context of your code base. So you can ask about a particular file and it can go and look for that, or you can specify context yourself. So what I can do is press add, for example, and I can add different files. So if I wanna ask a question about my server file, I just put server inside of here. Now I can also do things like ask it to search on the web. I can give it an image. I can, uh, what is it, link different documentation. So if I go to app mention, you see I can give it a PDF file. I can give it a folder, code, web, docs, git. Like there's so many different options here and the more context you can give this, the better it's going to perform. So feel free to go in here and mention a specific file or mention uh, like a website that you want it to go and read from. For example, if there's like a brand new feature or framework, you could link the uh, documentation to that and then get it to read that before it generates you the response. Okay, so anyways, let's say we wanted to do something inside of server. So I can say server, I say, okay, this is nice, but I wanna add, for example, more recipes. So I'll say, okay, great. Can you add some new recipes, please? Make them more unique. Okay, so let's hit enter and let's see what we get. All right, so we got some code here and we could just manually copy this in. We also can press apply. If we do that, it's actually gonna make a diff inside of the file. So you can see that it's showing us exactly what it's going to add uh, right inside of here. And this is completely different from something like ChatGPT, where if you had uh, you know comments like existing code or insert sample data or whatever, you need to actually like copy parts of this and kind of splice it into your file. Here, this can just do it for you. So what I'm gonna do is just accept this and you see that now we just get more recipes added inside of here. And by the way, if I didn't like this, I could just reply to it directly here with this ask button. Now it's referencing this particular response and I can say something like, hey, I don't like this recipe, swap it out with this one. So just a really quick way to inject that context. And again, the context is so important when you're coding. You wanna give this as much information as you possibly can. That's how you get the best replies. So that's the chat window. I think it's pretty straightforward. You can mention the context. You can choose the different model you wanna chat with. You can link documentation. And while we're here, I will mention that there is actually the option to kind of search through your code base. So you can just do the default chat, which is hitting enter or pressing this button, or you can do something like say, you know, where are my recipes? Defined. So if you're looking for a specific piece of code, maybe you're in a huge code base, it's kind of difficult to navigate. And then you can press on this button and it's actually going to search through the whole code base. You can also do control plus enter or command plus enter, obviously more effective in a larger code base, but you see it now tells us kind of where this is and gives us links to the different variables, to the files. And notice I can actually click on these and go to exactly where they are. Uh, which is pretty interesting. So if I go to sample recipes, it brings me to that variable. Anything that's blue is clickable and it's really uh, kind of easy to navigate through the code base. Okay, so that's the chat window. A lot of stuff you can do here, especially with the context. But now what I wanna talk about is kind of the inline completions. So while we're typing code, like let's say we actually wanna you know, edit something ourselves. So if we go to, for example, index.html, uh, maybe what I wanna do is add another select box for some reason. So I'm gonna say, okay, select, and then notice right away, it gives me really long auto completion. So if I hit tab, that's gonna complete it for me. I can press enter, go inside of here. It's already given me a bunch of options and I can generate code significantly faster using these. So this is the kind of the same one that I already had, but if I wanted to, I can change this around and rather than mood select, I'm gonna go maybe time select or something. And then we'll have an option. And what else are we gonna do here? Breakfast lunch, dinner, okay, let me just press tab correctly here. And you can see that I can kind of insert those inside. Nice, now let's say maybe I just wanna modify this block of code here. I can highlight on it and then I have two options. I can chat with it, control L, or I can do control K and control K is gonna bring up kind of the inline editor. So if I do control K, I can give this instructions on what I want it to do with this. So I could even just say something like delete this. I don't know why I would do that, but I could. And you can see now it generates the diff and then I can accept that or I can reject it. Now if we go back here, I'll say, add some more detailed options, please. Okay, let's hit enter. 
and then it again will give me the diff and you can see that it has early breakfast breakfast lunch etc okay let's accept that and there you go now we have our options so as kind of a mini recap if you want to generate a ton of files you're creating new files you're doing like a big feature change that's going to be touching a lot of the areas of code then if you open up the composer with control i or command i you can make a new composer or use an existing one and then you can read through all of these files like something like a github pull request and kind of make changes that way now if you want really smaller kind of targeted modifications you can just highlight lines of code and you can hit for example, control K. When you do this right in line in your code that opening up that uh, other window, you can make the change. So this is like a really fast way to change it in the editor when you know exactly what you want. And then if you want something that's kind of in between that and maybe doesn't even have to do with a code change, you can open up the chat window. Now here you can ask pretty much anything that you want. You can get it to recommend changes and then directly apply those. You can also ask it to, for example, explain code. So maybe, you know, I copy this and I paste this inside of here. Notice that context is automatically added when I do this and I can say, hey, can you, you know, explain these lines, please? Okay, and now it's going to go there, explain it and kind of give me a description of what's going on. So the chat window is more for that, whereas in here it's to make a change and actually modify a section of the code in a more targeted approach. So that's cool. The last major feature I want to show you is that we can actually use images to generate code as well. So let's do that. Okay, so I just grabbed a kind of random image here from the web of like a really simple login form. Now, obviously you'd maybe take like a Figma file or something a designer sending to you, but the point is you can take an image and you can pass it here and get it to generate code based on that. So what I can do is pick the image. So let's go, I think it's this one right here. It's gonna show up, I'm gonna say, can you please make a new HTML file that contains this form, make it look exactly like this and let's see what we get. So it generated some HTML, but notice if I press on apply, it's trying to apply that into my index.html. Now I wanted a new file and that's one of the things that this kind of gets wrong a lot in the chat. It's not gonna make the new file for you unless you use the composer. So I need to make a new file myself. So I'm just gonna go form.html. Okay, and then I'm gonna apply this. So I'm gonna click cancel, go back into form. When forms open, it's gonna default to using that. And I'm gonna go to apply. Notice it now says form.html. And then you'll see that it kind of pops in here. And then I can accept this. So I'm gonna hit control shift Y to accept that. And then let's open this up because I wanna see what it actually looks like. So let's reveal in file explorer let's open the form and that is pretty impressive that that is already created so if we go back to the image i was not expecting it to be that good uh let me open up the image again this is what the image looks like and this is the result that we got now sure there's a bit of an issue with the spacing but at least this like diagonal line got filled in which i was expecting it not to do yes there's some issue with the padding and the font but generally that's pretty close um, and that's pretty impressive. Again, I was not expecting it to give me that good of a result. So that was pretty impressive. And overall, Cursor has been super cool to use and has definitely supercharged my productivity. Now, with that in mind, I'm only able to use this really effectively because I already know how to code. Now, sure, you can use this as a complete beginner with minor experience, but it's gonna be significantly harder to actually get anything done because if you do get stuck, it just really is a little bit of a nightmare uh, to try to figure out what's going wrong with the AI, fixing the file, and a lot of times I do find myself having to dive in there and kind of make the change myself. Now with that in mind, if you do want to learn how to code or you want to learn even how the LLMs work or get more into data science, machine learning, kind of all of those interesting and new up and coming fields, I recommend that you check out the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. They adopt a first principles approach, ensuring you understand the why behind each concept. Every lesson is interactive, engaging you in hands-on problem solving, which has proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lectures. The content is developed by top-notch educators, researchers, and professionals from renowned institutions like MIT, Caltech, and Google. Brilliant emphasizes enhancing your critical thinking abilities through active problem solving rather than memorization. As you learn specific subjects, you're simultaneously training your mind to think more effectively. Consistent daily learning is crucial and Brilliant makes it effortless with their bite-sized lessons, allowing you to acquire meaningful knowledge in just a few minutes each day, perfect for replacing idle screen time. 
Additionally, Brilliant offers a comprehensive range of computer science and Python courses, as well as extensive AI workshops guiding you from a complete beginner to an expert through practical, hands-on lessons. Try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days by visiting brilliant.org slash techwithtim or click the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thank <laughs> you.